Hello, I'm Dr. Henry Wright. I'd like to talk about Parkinson's disease. It's, there's such a lot of fear about this disorder because it's so dehabilitating to people who uh, end up with it. Uh, Parkinson's disease, and I don't want to be too technical, uh, is really the result of a devaluation of dopamine. And in the studies behind Parkinson's, it is very easily found that dopamine reduction is extreme. And the more extreme it becomes, the more advanced the uh, involuntary muscular, you know, the spas and Parkinson's involves a tremor and uh, uh, a loss of control, of muscle control. And uh, so the key issue to Parkinson's disease then, if we were to think about this, is what is causing a reduction in dopamine. That would be the first culprit we're looking at. Um, your body is designed to manufacture um, dopamine, but dopamine is not remanufactured quickly. It takes some time when dopamine has been totally released in the body, which happens in a cocaine hit. All the dopamine has gone just like that. And it takes up to two years for the dopamine to be totally replaced. That's a long time. So this is not a cocaine issue. <laughs> I'm just helping you understand uh, the part of dopamine. Now dopamine is the pleasure neurotransmitter. A serotonin is the feel good about myself neurotransmitter. Dopamine gives you the fulfillment of, of the satisfaction. Uh, dopamine is what's released in um, sexual activity, in the completeness of a man and a, and a wife. And uh, that's released to give that chemical, that about a chemical fix, that's a good one. And God designed it <laughs> and is designed to give a completeness of spiritually and psychological and biological completeness uh, as wonderful. Uh, at the same time, what causes dopamine to be devalued can be built into the, what we call the mind-body connection. Uh, our thoughts control our bodies. I mean, it's, it's well known, the mind-body connection. We understand it in the field that I've, I'm the father of and seem to be, is the field of pneumopsychosomatology. That's a big word. Pneuma, spirit, psycho, soul, somatic, soma, expression, body. So it's a study of spirit, soul, body, not just a study of soul body, which is mind body. So if we don't consider the spirit part of us, we are ignorant. And that probably is a blind spot in science, uh, that science does not understand what it cannot see as something that produces thought. And we always assume that thought it has its origin in our own cerebral cortex, not true. Because the Bible indicates we can be tempted beyond our own intellect and have thoughts that didn't originate in our intellect, but become part of our intellect and can become part of our long-term memory and our emotions and our feelings. Now I said all that, not to complicate the subject, but to talk about dopamine. Um, there is a scripture then I will give an example. There is a scripture that helps us understand Parkinson's. And it says this, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when desire comes, it's a tree of life. When you have hope deferred, you don't have faith working. Because faith is the things of hope that are working. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So when you have hope deferred, you don't have faith working for you. You have the opposite. So your body is responding to this down earth emotion. Um, this hope, I have hope, but it's never going to come to pass. I'm getting older. That's why this disease is a disease that is quite prevalent in older individuals because in the curvature of life, you know, you've got 30, you got 20 years to learn something and you know, grow up, go to school, 
The next 40 years, you try to practice what you thought you learned. In the last 20 years, you try to figure out what happened to you, and you fly away. So in this curvature of life, there are many forces that attack us in our identity and our success or failure of life. And thereby many people, when they've not achieved their hopes and desires because of this circumstance or that circumstance, then they devalue themselves in the failure of it. And no longer do they have faith for the achievement of that faith or hope, but they no longer expect it. This has an immediate effect on human physiology at the chemical level, and that is the level of dopamine. I'll give you an example, and it's, and it's, not a, it's a sad example. I was uh, teaching many years ago, and I was in a church, and the past pastor, he used to be the, in fact, he was the founding father of this church, which was a large church. And there was a division that came. There was an uprising of young bucks that thought they could do it better. And he was a traditional go-getter done biblical. And they wanted to go into more seeker-friendly. They wanted to move ahead. And so they bumped into this <laughs> traditional Bible-believing uh, pastor that was the founder in this very large church, and they voted him out of his own church that he founded. I ran across him attending a church service in this very church. Now, he would come to church there, but he had no longer to do with it. But he had developed Parkinson's. And his wife brought him to me at the end of his service. I taught in that church. And he was standing there with the obvious tremors of Parkinson's. And all I could hear in my mind is hope deferred makes the heart sick. And I wanted to know where his faith and his hopes had been dashed. Now, I didn't know this story until I asked this question. What hindered your hopes and what deferred your hopes? What happened in your life in which you had a loss? Now, maybe you even blame yourself for the loss. And I heard this story. What do you do with that? I looked at him. Now here's where this story perhaps could be sad, and it is sad for me, but it may be a solution for you. You may not be this pastor that got caught in this mix of not even understanding the scripture, what hope deferred can do and reduce dopamine, but perhaps it'll help you. So I said to him, why don't you just go start another church? <laughs> he looked at me like he'd seen a ghost. <laughs> he said, what? I can't pastor church like this. And he, he's got the tremors and, and, and he said it at my age and, and, and I can't do that. But in the back of my mind, I'm hearing this scripture. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. I got it right here. But when desire comes, it's a tree of life. Now that comes to how we move from the disease into the healing. Because I know that in order to defeat Parkinson's, all we have to do, I mean, it makes it sound so very simple, but all we have to do is bring dopamine levels back up to proper normalcy and personality agreement, faith, and the tremors will stop. How can I get this man back into hope again? Not deferred, but activated with faith. It's my project that day. So I said, I want you to go, uh, I understand what happened here, I'm sorry. It's sad, but once you, just go out and start another church somewhere. There's a big city. There's places in this city that need the gospel. And you wouldn't be in competition with this church. This church doesn't serve the whole city. It's a big city of millions of people. Go somewhere else. Let God tell you where to go. They need a good shepherd. And he looked at me and he said, I can't do it. Look at me. I said, why did you become a pastor to begin with? 
Did God call you or did men appoint you? Did you have a calling or did you just fall into men and say, here's what you should do? He said, no, God called me many years ago to shepherd a flock. And, it, and I did for years, decades. I said, so you, you became a pastor because you felt God called you. I said, well, the giftings and callings of God are without repentance. That means God didn't change his mind. Maybe you did. Did you change your mind about your calling? Or you're looking at your circumstances, not your calling. Because your calling is filled with dopamine. You're running from your calling. It's filled with no dopamine. And according to the scripture again, hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when desire comes. He said, but look at me. I said, yeah, I, I see you. I said, you know, Moses pastored a church of about two and a half million. He couldn't even talk for himself. And have his brother speak for him. I said, are you serious? I said, go, say, God, you called me. I had a bad situation in my life. Men were not faithful to my calling. And I want to be a shepherd of your people. And God will give you people to care for. When you go in faith, then your dopamine will start to come up again. And I says, and when you stand before the people, and I don't mean to embarrass you, sir, and I don't mean to be an embarrassment to anything about this, but you talk to people about God and do it with the tremors. And they'll understand your voice, and you'll explain God. And as you follow your heart, the Bible says when desire comes, it's a tree of life, not a tree of death. And he could not embrace, he just cried. His wife cried. She looked at him and said, Pastor Wright has told you the truth, dear. He's given you a scripture to prove everything. I, he said, I can't do it. Look at me. And to this day, I watched his wife crying this time, walking away as he protested what faith represented. These things have to be understood in the church. Science has no answer. Science has no answer. In fact, science understands, and they've tried to artificially introduce dopamine uh, injections and dopamine this and dopamine that to try to, to be a therapeutic, and it's not working. You know why? Because life is not artificial. And we're not androids being maintained by a squirt here and a squirt there by the world. This thing works from within. Faith is of God from within, not an injection from without. It could be that if you're listening and you have a friend, or maybe you or yourself, that this conversation will help you and God can meet you in defeating. Because I've got some good news for you. Parkinson's is not a true disease. It's a syndrome. It can be defeated. If you have enjoyed this presentation, give it a thumbs up. Ring the bell, subscribe, or leave us a comment.